Ukrainian officer warns there are signs of preparation of offensive by Belarus to Ukraine. Recently, the American Institute for the Study of War reported that Russia is deploying troops to attack Kharkiv. The shelling of this Ukrainian city has intensified. Is there a real danger for Kharkiv? Charter 97 media outlet addressed this question to the reserve major of the National Guard of Ukraine, a veteran of the Russian-Ukrainian war, Oleksiy Hetman. That's possible. However, the group concentrated there will not be able to conduct serious offensive operations due to the small number. The offensive is possible if the Russian Federation adds manpower and weapons, Oleksiy Hetman said. Will they do it? They will definitely do something. Provocations or local offensive actions. It should not be assumed that they just gathered about 70,000 troops there to sit in the field, do nothing and eat porridge. Ukraine should keep its units there. I emphasize that 70,000 is a huge group, but it is not enough to attack such a large city. What exactly will be there, we will see soon enough. Much also depends on how much strength the Russians will add to it. There are signs of an offensive, increased shelling, sabotage. They do everything according to the classics of the combat regulations before the offensive. But not always, preparatory actions lead to subsequent offensives on the ground. I do not think that they spend shells and missiles only for the purpose of distraction. After such preparatory attacks, on the ground begin, he added. According to him, on the part of Belarus, it is even less likely that they will try to do something if compared with Kharkiv. However, we see in the Chernihiv, Sumy and Kiev regions the strengthening of the work of sabotage and reconnaissance groups. This is a sign of preparation for the offensive, but most likely they want to force Ukraine to keep a certain number of forces there. Nevertheless, the Russians will not take us by surprise. We will understand, see and prepare, he added. Squad, ребят, на погоде на 93. Проблема в том, что там этих гаражей много, они такие тупые. Да, там и... еще машины стоят, ты представляешь, Вон там... как они потратятся на это. Так людей, там нету людей там. The United States of America will provide Ukraine with weapons as part of a new $400 million military aid package, according to the White House and Andrew Yermak, the head of the office of the President of Ukraine. The text specifies that Biden has instructed Secretary of State Antony Blinken to allocate $400 million for Ukraine's needs. It should be noted that this is the second military aid package to Ukraine from the United States after Congress allocated funds for this at the end of April. According to Yermak, the new U.S. package includes additional ammo for Patriot and NASM systems, Stinger anti-aircraft missiles, more HIMARS systems with ammunition, 155mm and 105mm artillery shells, and equipment for integrating Western launchers, missiles, and radars with Ukrainian systems. The Pentagon specifies Bradley infantry fighting vehicles, M113 armored personnel carriers, anti-mine vehicles with ambush protection, and trailers for hauling heavy equipment. Tow missiles, Javelin and that, four anti-tank systems, high-precision aviation ammunition, harm missiles, small arms and ammunition, explosive ammunition and demoning equipment, coastal and river patrol boats, and means of chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear protection, are all included in the assistance package. Prior to this, U.S. assistance to Ukraine had been suspended for several months due to funding running out. Immediately following the decision of Congress, U.S. President Joe Biden announced the first military aid package to Ukraine after a considerable hiatus. 
Later, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky clarified that the package included long-range Atakms missiles, which Kyiv had long been asking Washington for. The total value of the weaponry included in the package amounted to billions of dollars.